So in this video, we're going to be going over two more types of u sub problems. The first is going to be when the u is the denominator of a function, and the second is going to be when the u is the exponent of a function. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have that if we start off with a bunch of rules that are going to be very handy when computing these types of problems, right? And then let's jump straight into example one so we can go ahead and discuss when the u is the denominator of a function, right? So here we have 1 over x plus 1 equal to u, right? So starting off, we can't integrate this because the only thing that we know how to integrate, right, is 1 over x, right? 1 over x is going to be the only rule that we have when it comes to integration. Anything other than that, like a 1 over x plus 1, we can integrate. So therefore, we need to go ahead and use u substitution, right? So we start off u sub by picking our u and then finding our du, which we're experts doing by now. We just go ahead and pick our u, which is going to be the bottom right here. So u is going to be equal to x plus 1. And then our du is going to be equal to 1 times the dx, right? And then we always go ahead and put a dx in blue or in a different color so we can make sure that we know that the third step that follows from there is going to be to solve for dx, right? So let's go ahead and do that. If we solve for dx, there isn't really much to do because du is equal to 1 dx or du is equal to dx. So dividing by 1 won't really make a difference, but let's go ahead and do that anyway. So in this case, they're both equal to each other, so there isn't much to do. The only thing that we really need to care about is going to be the new u that we have, right? So when we go to step 4, we go ahead and substitute in terms of u, which means that we're going to have 1 over our x plus 1 is now turned into u, so it's 1 over u. And then the dx is equal to du. So this becomes a pretty straightforward problem because there isn't much to do. There isn't much to cancel or mix around. There isn't even any constants to take out. And then we go ahead and look at our rules. Now we remember that whenever we have 1 over x or 1 over any variable, the integration is going to turn into ln of x plus c, right? So that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to have ln of u plus c. So we went ahead and we integrated because everything was ready in terms of u. And now we just go ahead and do our last step, which is substitute the u back in. So we go ahead and do that. And we have ln of u plus c, in which I bring down my u down here, which is x plus 1. And these type of problems are very, very common. You're going to see them over and over again. Whenever you have a denominator problem, expect to use ln. It's going to be very likely that you're going to be using ln, right? So... Let's go ahead and now move to example two that we're done with example one and check it out. So here in example two, I made it a little more difficult because remember when I asked you that we have a denominator here, right? We have a whole denominator, but we also have a function a three X squared minus one being raised to a power inside of a denominator. Well, here's the deal. What do I make equal to u, right? So I'm going to start off by first rewriting this whole integral as x dx over 3x squared minus 1. And the corresponding exponent of a radical is a 1 half, right? So what do I let equal to u? Do I let equal u the whole denominator or do I just let u equal to the inside of the function being raised to a power inside of the denominator? And the answer to that question is going to be u is always going to be the inside of the function being raised to a power. So we're combining two rules here, the inside of a parentheses with a denominator rule. So here our u is going to be 3x squared minus 1. I know there's a little x up here, but we'll take care of that guy in just a second, right? So once that we found our u, we go ahead and we find our du, which is going to be 6x, and then we don't forget to put our dx in a different color, because from then our third step is going to be to solve for dx, right? So once we identified our u in this case, which is going to be the inside of the function being raised to a power. And then we go ahead and find our du, we solve for dx, right? So if you wonder what happens if I let u equal to the whole denominator, well, try it out for yourself and then you're going to run into some crazy mess and then the x's won't cancel, right? What happens if you use the wrong u, if you pick the wrong u, the big consequence is going to be that you cannot make everything in terms of u, right? You're never going to be able to get it to step four. And if you can't get to step four, you can't, you can't finish your problem. So the whole idea is to make sure to get to step four, and you only get to step four by making sure you pick the right u. So now let's, let's finish step three in which we solve for dx. So our dx is going to be equal to du over 6x. Cool. So now that we have that, 
we're ready to substitute in terms of u. So this can always get a little tricky because here we have to cancel stuff and whatnot. So let's go ahead and do that. So I don't have anything to cancel that x that I circled, right? So I'm just going to leave it up there. But I do know that the inside of that of that of the three x squared minus one that's equal to u. So I'm going to go ahead and let that equal to u raised to the one half. And then my dx, my dx here is going to be equal to du over 6x, right? And here's the good thing about this problem. The x from the top cancels out from the x from the bottom. That always needs to happen because if not, we're in trouble. If not, we can't make it all in terms of u, and then we can't integrate. We can never integrate u's and x's, right? Since we have a du, everything we integrate has to be in terms of u. So we go ahead and just cancel out these x's, and then we're going to bring out this 6 to the front. So now our new kind of looking integral is 1 6 du outside here, and then we can rewrite this as 1 over u to the 1 half. But we still have no rule to integrate 1 over u to the 1 half, right? But we're going to use this rule right here and have a little variation to it by bringing the exponent up, right? So we're going to go ahead and bring the exponent up. So we have 1 6 integration of u to the negative one half du. So now that we are ready to integrate, we go ahead and finish step five by integrating, right? So there's a lot more manipulation in this problem in example two compared to example one, but that's why it's a little harder and a little more challenging. So we go ahead and integrate this. We're gonna start up here, and we start off by just leaving the constant. It's not gonna be a problem right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and integrate the u to the negative one half. So if we add one to the negative one half, what is that going to give us? That is going to give us one half negative one half plus one is going to be one half and then we're going to divide by one half and i know the division of one half is going to seem a little bit annoying but i'll tell you just how to take care of it and then we're going to add a plus c so don't let this one half right here under kind of throw you off you're always just going to multiply by the reciprocal right so if you have you're dividing by one half by one third by two thirds whatever it is you're just going to multiply by the reciprocal so we're going to go ahead and do that we're going to have one six times the reciprocal of one half, which is two for one, and then u to the one half plus c, right? And now since we're running out of space, we're gonna go ahead and do like two steps in one. And the first step, I'm gonna scroll up just a bit, it's gonna be, we're gonna see what one six times two over one is, which it gives you two six or one third, right? So it's actually gonna give you one third if you multiply one six times two, two over one. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug the u back in here as well. And the u is going to be three x squared. The u is going to be right here, three x squared plus, I mean, three x squared minus one, and it's going to be raised to the one half plus c. And if you wanted to just do one last step, you can go ahead and change this, you can go ahead and change this one half exponent to a radical, therefore giving you nothing too different, just one third 3x squared minus 1, square root of all that, plus c. And this could have been your final answer. Well, this right here was your final answer. And always remember that you need to check for a plus c in your final answers. So I'm kind of rewrite this because it might be a little ugly. 3x squared minus 1. All right? So that's how we deal with when we have ex um, denominators as our use of that we need to do. So um, let's go ahead and now do exponents. So here with exponents, I think exponents one of one of the simpler ones because the integration of exponents is going to be always, we're always trying to get it to be e to the u, right? Because that's what we know how to integrate. Our rules, our rules that we have are always going to be the integration of e to the x is going to lead us to another e to the x. So our goal is to leave things in e to the u, right? So let's put that over here. Like our goal is to have e to the u somehow. Integration of e to the u, so we can just have e to the u. So Let's see how well we can achieve our goal depending on the problem, right? So here's example three. I kind of gave you guys a, an, an easier problem so we can start off and just get the idea of it, right? So I told you guys that when exponents, the, the, the exponent with exponential functions, the exponent is going to be is going to be the u. So that means that our u here is going to be 5x and our du is going to be 5dx, right? And we're going to leave that in. In blue so we can know that we can solve for dx solving for dx here is gonna be pretty simple all we need to do is divide 5 by both sides leaving us with du over 5 and now we go ahead and make everything in terms of u trying to get to e to the u that is our goal so we're gonna have e 
to the u, right? Which is our, our 5x is now equal to u, and then our dx is equal to du over 5. Or I should say our goal should be e to the u, du. And all we're going to do is just take out this 5 because it's a constant. We're going to take it out as 1 fifth, and we're going to have e to the u, u. Now, all we're going to do is what is integration of e to the u? It's e to the u. So that's all we had to do there. So that's why e to the exponents are kind of easier because the integration itself is very simple. So we're going to multiply it by e to the u plus c. Always remember to finger plus c. And our last step is going to be to plug our to plug our u back in. It's going to be to plug our u back in. So it's going to be 5x. All right. And we're done. And if you guys have any questions, because it seemed way too simple, you can go ahead and take the derivative, and then you'll see you'll get back to your original function that you're integrating. So now let's go ahead and do example four, in which it's going to be a little more challenging because we got to just kind of simplify a little more. But the idea and the goal is exactly the same to get to to get to e to the u du. So our exponent is always our u. So we have x squared as our u. Then our du is going to be two x dx. You see, I don't like the dx in red, I like it in blue, because then I would automatically know my next step after that is going to be to solve for dx. So once I do that, I need to divide both sides by by 2x, so I'm going to have du over 2x. Cool. Now that I have my dx, I can go ahead and substitute everything in terms of u. See, it's kind of like the same recipe that I just keep saying over and over again until we all get it. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take out this 5 x e to the x squared. I can't take out x's because they're variables. I can only take out constants. So you guys see that this x here is going to be a problem. And since from our experience from doing different problems, we know that hopefully this thing cancels, that this x somehow cancels. So we're going to go ahead and write 5 integration of x because we have nothing to simplify this x yet with e to the x squared, which is going to be e to the u. And then our dx is going to be equal to du over 2x, right? So real quick, we cancel out this x because it's bothering us. We can't have an x in our problem. So we're going to go ahead and cancel out the x's. And we're going to bring out this 2. So we're going to rewrite our x, our integration as e to the 5, 5 halves, integration of e to the u du. We have reached our goal. So now we can just go ahead and do our simple integration, which is 5 over 2 e to the u plus c. Leaving us to our next step that we just do what? Plug in the u back in just following our step box and that's all we're going to do we're going to bring our u back in so we have that and we are done all right so now in the next video we're going to go ahead and talk about the different the other two the last two techniques when it comes to doing u substitution right and we're always going to do all the practice problems all mixed up so i don't exactly tell you do practice problems on this i just kind of give you a u sub and then Half of the work is going to be like, hey, what do I actually do? Which u, which, which u is my actual answer, right? So picking the u is a very important part. So I'm going to make sure you guys are challenged a little bit by having to figure it out which type of problem is this. And I'd mean just telling you, hey, this is this, use u sub. You know, it's a lot harder. It's a little more challenging to actually, you know, recognize what the u is. So let's go check you guys out in the next video.